I was at the market and I bought this neat little skull for Halloween. It was filled with candy and um, the reason why I bought this was because I saw great potential. As a side hobby, I make a lot of picks, as you can see. And I, I use these little tin boxes that I put them in. And uh, it's kind of a boring thing. I want something cool that I can display and show off that I make handmade little picks of all different sizes and colors that are, you know, neat and nice thing to have. And also like, I mean, you should display things that you make. I mean, you should be proud of the things you've made. I mean, even if not everything is perfect, I think you should, you know, show that you're actually building things and having fun and being a creative person. So I thought a super easy little Halloween thing could be to make, customize this just a little bit extra and make this into a ball for all the picks. They fit very neatly in here. And, uh, you know, you could stop here and that would be really great. Just a tiny cute little ball like that. But I think we can do something more interesting and more fun and make this, you know, into something a, a little bit extra cool and a little bit more awesome. And the thing I thought about was putting these small electrical lights in because they have a bottom with a switch that you can turn it on or off and the lights that come inside of it, and here's one that I've already taken apart, are made to flicker like an actual candle. So I thought we could drill a hole in the eyes and put two of these little LEDs in the eyes, like this, but on the back. I don't know if you can see. And then drill a hole in the back here, fit this in so that we have easy access to the switch. And then just, you know, whenever we feel like showing off our cool handmade picks a little bit extra, we can turn on the switch and just have it standing there on the table with eyes that have the flame of a candle in them. And this is gonna be super easy. All we basically have to do is drill three holes for the eyes and for the candle. And then all we have to do is glue the LEDs in place and put uh, wires going from the LED back to the, the actual switch inside of the candle. So let's do that. So the first step is obviously to get rid of all these picks because they are in the way. So the next step is that I take in all and I make the marks in the plastic by pushing into it so it becomes a little mark for where I want to drill the holes. Now you can measure out the exact middle or you can eyeball it like I just did. Um, it's really up to you. But you'll get a little indent, which I don't know if you can see in the eye. There you can see it, it's a little, tiny little dot. And all you need to do now is take your drill and, and we're gonna start off with a two mil drill bit. And we're just, we're just gonna drill through where we've made the dots. Now I'm using metal drill bits. Go slowly and just keep on and don't force it through because then you're gonna plunge into it. Just slowly like that. Now we have two pilot holes. We can put our drill aside for now and we can put the drill bit back in its package and put it away because we're not gonna need it anymore. The next step we got to do is we're gonna take the actual LED and we're going to measure it to see how big of a hole it needs. And this one needs a five mil. And if you look at the LED, really closely you can see that it has a, a little ledge right at the bottom 
where it's a little bit thicker maybe around uh, let's see what it is the bottom is actually five and a half mil so we're going to drill this to five which is the upper part of the LED so that it can go through but not fall through and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a step bit if you don't have a step bit they are very inexpensive and you can buy them and you're going to need to use them for a lot of things to build like guitars and other stuff they are one of those tools that are worth every cent of the money now I, my step bit doesn't go up to five which is the dimension I want so I'm going back again with a metal cutting drill bit and I'm just enlarging the hole by one mil now if you look closely you can see that there are some burrs around which is not going to look that nice when we're all said and done so we're going to take just a tiny little marking knife that I've made I'll show you in another video how to do it and uh, just clean up the burrs that are in the eye holes and be careful so you don't slip or at least not slip too much because you can cut yourself if you slip around too much and now the LEDs should easily pop through you can see that the LED is in the eye so what we have to do now is put this to the side and work on the actual light and the first thing we need to do is if we look on the underside what it is actually doing is that it's just the metal legs of the LED are bent into place and all you're doing is when you move the switch you're basically just pushing the leg out it's very hard to show on the camera I hope you can see that the leg is pushing out so what we need to do is we have to make two legs out of some steel wire to uh, replace those legs but what we need to do is make sure that this wire works and the way we do it is we take our multimeter we put it to sound test which basically means that if these two uh, are touching we get a sound and what that means is if something is conductive we can touch and hear the sound but if it's not conductive we don't get a sound and sometimes you find wires that aren't conductive because they're made of something that you think is metal but it is actually not it's some other kind of material but we're in luck this steel wire will work and do a good job so now that we know that will work we can put the multimeter away and we can cut a piece of wire we don't need much at all this is probably too much and we can start to try to bend them into a way where they can replace the LED and just be two legs on the side and we're also going to need some glue and I'm thinking we're going to experiment and try to use some super glue it should hold everything in place just fine so what I'm gonna do first is I'm just gonna run this through my fingers to make it a little bit straighter since it's a bit bulky from being coiled up on the piece of wood that holds the wire in place and then I'm gonna fold it in half but I'm not too careful because I know both of these pieces are too long I'm gonna cut them in half and now we'll begin the tedious job of trying to pull this LED out without ruining it and then like that just pulling it out and now replacing the wire with the LED legs with the wire so in through one hole and bend over to the side like 
hope you can see it. It's a bit hard maybe to see, but it's just bent to the side. And that's just where it's going to touch one of the sides of the battery. Now I can put this on the side and I can put a dab of glue. This is why it's a good thing to have a soft mattress that you can poke things into. And I can put a dab of glue to keep it in place and just wait a couple of minutes for it to dry. Okay, so now that the leg has dried for a couple of minutes, just to be sure, we can start with the other leg. And this is actually the leg that is a bit fiddly. Um, and I don't think there is an easy way to do this. You just have to like fiddle around with it and hope for the best that you actually manage to do it and be patient and try again and again and again until you actually make it. There's a little sleeve cut into the top here. I hope you can see it. See it when my hand is not in the way, maybe there it is. And you poke the wire through there and as you move the switch from off to on, it pulls the wire closer into the cavity, which means that when the black line on the battery isolates the plus and minus side, which means that this moves into the side, which is obviously a part of the plus side. So what you have to do is you have to hold the battery in place and you have to who poke the wire through and then you have to try to lock it in which you can see even I struggle with which I mean even I I mean like that, it's not like I'm some superhuman or anything but you know what I mean and make sure that it follow falls in the groove and is locked in tight and then you have to bend the wire in this place and here's where some tools maybe can come to your aid and then you have to hold the wire in that place and pour some super glue and I'm just gonna hold it in place for I don't know a couple of minutes until I'm certain or even more than certain that the glue has dried so we can set that aside for now. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna we're gonna take this one apart. You can do that super quickly and easy. You can just put a knife in under the side where the top part and the under part meets. They're not glued in, so it's super easy to just pry them apart. And then just take off the back plate bend the wire up and pull it out and now what we need to do is we have to solder connection connecting these wires together and we're going to do that super easily all we really need to think about is making sure that they fit inside the eyes and what i mean fit inside the eyes is make sure that wires are long enough First off, we have to take the battery and just hold the plus side to one leg and the top side to the other and see if they light up the LED. Like that. And that's basically how the eye is going to look. Hopefully it will look a little bit cooler in real life than it does on the camera right now because honestly that doesn't look, doesn't look very much. Anyway. Usually they have one leg that is longer, the longest leg is for the plus, but since these have been cut and made into something, that doesn't necessarily apply. On this one, actually the shorter one is plus. And on this one, let's just see, on this one, yeah, the shorter leg is plus. So now we know that that might not be relevant for your light that you're using 
especially if you're using some sort of other LED. There are lots of fun LEDs you can use for this, but um, you have to check if you're using something from something. If you buy new LEDs that have never been in something before, then you know that the long leg is the LED. So what we're going to do first is we're going to strip some wire. We need one black wire, and this is just a pretty long piece of wire, and we're not going to need that much, but it's better to have too much and then just cut them to size afterwards than having too little and having to go get new wire and having this piece of wire be useless. That's always a shame. I cut it like that, then I hold it up to the eye. I give myself a little bit of seam alignment or whatever you want to call it, like that. So it's not super tight. And then I cut a tiny little groove. Be very careful so I don't cut the wire off. And when I say I don't cut the wire off, I mean you have to cut through the plastic, but you don't have to cut through the actual copper that is on the inside. And by pulling off an extra piece in the top, so it's a bit more exposed there than maybe it should be, you can then slide this piece that you've made a groove from down a piece, just a tiny bit. And that will expose wires on both those sides. And then we're going to measure from the skull down to the bottom and see how much wire we actually need. And we're going to give ourselves a little seam alignment, or whatever you want to call it, just a little bit extra, basically. And we're going to cut that off. And then we're going to just carefully strip off a tiny bit of wire on this side too. So basically we have three points that are exposed. We have the top here, we have the other side, and then we have the other part. And it's just the spacing in between the eyes, basically, from those two. And we're going to do the same thing to this other wire. Now, usually you use a red wire and a black wire, but I'm using an orange one. It doesn't affect the tone of the instrument, especially since we're not making an instrument. But it does, uh, you know, fit well with the Halloween. So that's very important. And now we're going to tin the wires. And if you don't know what tinning the wires mean, is that you basically, you put solder on the wires where they're supposed to have um, solder before you attach them to anything. So we're just basically letting solder flow flow into the wire where we're going to connect things. Something like that. Now we have tinned all the wires and we can connect them. Again, if you've forgotten, you can just check to see which side is the plus and which one is the negative. And all you have to do is tin the LEDs as well. If you have a mat on your table like I have, you can stick the LEDs into it so you don't have to hold them. And then you can just put a tiny bit of solder on them. And then we try to remember what we just learned, which was that in this case, the shorter legs are the positive ones, so we connect it to the orange cable in this case, and then we connect the black wire to the ground legs. And now we can check and see if we did it correctly. And what we have to do is just hold the orange wire to the plus side and the black wire to the ground side. And 
as I hope you can see, they light up. So we've done this correctly. So the next step is a little bit fiddly. We have to make room for one of these lights in here. In this particular one, there is a bump which helps me center this. But the problem is that this bump isn't really centered. So I'm not going to use it. I'm actually going to try to move this to the side. Now what I need to do is I have to take a drill bit that is smaller size and I have to make a dent where I want to drill this out. Then I can do a pilot hole. And once I've drilled the pilot hole, I can switch out the bit for step bit. Now my drill bit don't go to the size that I need them to. So I'm just going to enlarge with this one as far as I can. Something like that. Now we have a hole like that. And all we have to do is enlarge it a little bit more. Because you can see this doesn't really fit. The way I'm going to do it is that I'm going to use the sander to try to enlarge this hole enough so that the candle can fit in there snugly. Okay, so I'm back. So now I've made a hole. It's a little bit wonky, the hole, because I accidentally slipped a little bit. But that's okay. Everything can be fixed. And it doesn't really matter. The bottom is a little bit wonky. But if you're careful, you won't have the same problems I have. I am being overly not cautious. The opposite of cautious. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Be careful with your tools is what I'm trying to say. Now we're getting back to this part and we're gonna assemble the lights with this one. And first off we're gonna cut these wires down a bit to make them easier to work with. Just like that. And then we're gonna take our lights and we're gonna put the battery in to see which one is what. And this one, that is the first one up is the ground because when we put the battery back in we can see that that's the one touching and so what we have to do is we have to put some solder on there and then to tin it and then tin the other as we always do always pre-tin things and then we just connect the wires to the appropriate leg and now we can put the battery in and we can cut this little sleeve down to size and as you can see it doesn't start and that's because if you look look really closely the leg isn't touching so this is where you have to come in and try to yank it in place to make sure that it is in fact touching this is super fiddly okay so after some fiddling around and moving the wires around and bending them and trying to make it work um, this is not hard but it does takes a does take a little bit of patience you can basically just move them around and and get them started now, as you can see, this causes a trouble. So we're going to have to put it back into this to make sure the wires don't move around and glitch out. And then just try to untangle them from themselves so that they don't shorten out on each other. Like that. And we can... put this back into its place and it should snap shut and then you can light it up and turn it on and, on. and now all we need to do is just put the LEDs through the holes put this in the bottom 
and glue it in place. Something like that. So now I'm just gonna put a tiny bit of super glue to hold the candle part in place. And then we are done for this video. Why is this all of a sudden very hard to put together?